Welcome to The Hook. I'm Aaron Castro, your host. MLR News and Notes. This is the season preview, everyone. Uh, this last week, the Seattle Seawolves finally took to the field, and they defeated the Prairie Wolfpack in a controlled and closed scrimmage, 40-7 in front of their invited friends and family at Starfire Sports, which was pretty awesome. Uh, when it comes to additions to MLR teams, Will Holder, former U.S. Army world-class athlete program player and USA 7s Eagle and USA 15s Eagle, when, he, uh, when he's available uh, at Fort Lewis, he'll probably be making appearances for the Seattle Seawolves at this time. Uh, so that's going to be pretty cool to see. I would love to uh, see if he can make it back into Eagles contention because that would just, you know, a stronger pool of players is the better. Uh, it's really hard to know what the quality of competition that was because in the last two years, the Prairie Wolf Pack in the CRC has finished bottom of the table. Two of their players uh, went down to the MLR in Mosaic Sampson to Seattle and Hubert Bidens to the NOLA goal. Uh, they did get reinforced with uh, Ben Lesage and Nick Blevins uh, for this match, so that was kind of nice. So he brought in two Canadian international centers. But for the most part, I think there was another dominance up front. It's really hard to know. Overall, what went on other than a scoring fest for Seattle. Uh, Seattle will face uh, the San Diego Legion this week. But let's get into some other player additions. We had Dylan Fawcett and Sam Fig picked up by the Glendale Raptors. And then, that was a big one. Victor Comtat has come back from Massey in France. And he is with Austin Elite Rugby. So that is going to be pretty awesome. Pierce Dargan... Uh, will show up, I think has shown up for Nola Gold, Joey Yosefa, uh, former New England Patriot, is playing with the Houston Sabercats. Uh, so a lot of really good stuff. You have William Razaleka and Vili Toluputau, I think I got that right, also for Seattle Seawolves, a lot of big stuff there. But let's get into season expectations. What do you want to see out of the league? Well, what I want to see out of the league is just tons of, you know, content when it comes to uh, certain things like players, modern player tracking, so stats uh, for everything so that people can develop fantasy sports engines. Uh, over at Ur Full of Dirt, we're going to attempt to run an engine on Google Forms. Uh, that will be pretty awesome based on the stats that the league has provided, which is actually pretty going to be pretty in-depth for the American populace. And then, uh, you know, on the field, what, is, what does this mean? So I look at how on-the-field performance will take place, and I want, to see, I want to see no amateur players in the Eagles pool. That's the kind of development I want everyone uh, out there pushing hard, like, they're in the professional environment, therefore they're going to get selected because they're going to develop and they're going to get the meaningful minutes. So that's a success benchmark for the league, I think. And then, uh, you know, TV, if we get 250,000 people watching the final, that will be a tremendous success, right? Uh, attendance be, with varying sizes of stadia, the league will be a smashing success if it averages 25 to 100 to 3,000, uh, which would b sort of build upon that benchmark that set, was set by Pro with about 1,700. And then, well, let's just get into the teams. So, preview, this is what I got. Glendale Raptors is the preseason number one. The... Houston Sabercats as the preseason number two. The NOLA Gold as the preseason number three. The Austin Elite as the preseason number four. The Utah. Yeah, 
the Utah Warriors is preseason number five, San Diego Legion is the preseason number six, and the Seattle Seawolves as the bottom of the table guy. Um, reason is, uh, you know, power rankings will adjust uh, next week. The reason is for Seattle is they don't have a coach right now. Um, immigration for what it is, uh, you know, Tony Healy wasn't able to get his visa approved. And, you know, they're being coached by scrum half Phil Mack, who is a rugby coach with Thunder Rugby, so he's going to bring a lot of knowledge. But, you know, it's going to be hard to coach and play at the same time at a very high level. Uh, looking at Glendale and Houston, you look at Glendale's been sort of built over time, however, they do have a lot of new faces. So they've worked new people in slowly over time, over the last year, which is how uh, Coach David Williams likes to do things. He has a process, so it's like, you know, add new players all the time, but not a lot. It's like one or two, maybe three. So we've seen over, you know, a course of months about 12 players added to the Glendale Raptors. And then we've seen over the course of now, yeah, now about 12 months, the Houston Sabercats building a side and then playing 16 preseason matches, which was extremely important to develop uh, their systems and their depth. Uh, and, you know, they're probably the deepest forward pack out there in the league. In the back line, they're probably pretty deep, too, overall, except that, you know, their, their first team players have earned the most time to play. And then NOLA, they've, under Nate Osborne, they've steadily improved every single game, which is what I think is going to happen again uh, when they face off against uh, the Sabercats. I think the Sabercats are going to win, but I think NOLA's going to be better again. And uh, Austin, well, they have a really talented scrum, you know, and... I think uh, we saw systems get in place uh, for their second match against New Orleans in the preseason. And, you know, it's, it's about getting the, the second, your seconds in uh, so that they're fit at game speed. So, and then you look at Utah, uh, if they get their scrum right, they're going to be the most dangerous team in the league. Period. Uh, if they get that fixed, it's going to be, people are going to be in for a rude awakening. And then let's look at the other two, San Diego. They're very dangerous in the backs. They're very dangerous in the loose forwards. My biggest concern is at lock and at props. Uh, and, and if they, they address part of that with Dolph Botha and Lance Lamprecht, but I think they still need a, a top-end loose head uh, to compete in, a, you know, in their training room so that they can produce the best scrum. But I think they're going to have a funny game plan, which will uh, address space on the pitch, and they're going to play a very interesting brand of rugby. But So that gets us down to, again, Seattle. They didn't play a lot. Really... Hard to know what to see from them after playing the Wolfpack, and we'll see with San Diego. So, let's preview the matches of the week. We've got New Orleans going to Houston. Well, uh, let's go with Houston over New Orleans, but it's going to be close, about 10 to 15 spread is what I got. And then, uh, what was it? Austin at Glendale, I think... Austin is going to be much improved. However, I think Glendale's going to roll in the second half. Probably about a margin of about 25. However, Austin will look competent and dangerous throughout this match. And then we've got San Diego traveling up to Seattle. And based on what Coach Hoadley is doing, I think that they're going to be able to, to do something on Seattle. Uh, I think once Seattle plays a bunch of games, they will be settled in, but it might take them a little bit because they're a bit behind having only had one preseason match uh, to test their test themselves, and it was just last week. So, And then 
there is a preseason match this week. The Utah Warriors host the Prairie Wolfpack. I think Utah will get their preseason win. We'll sort of see the second half of that game against the Arrows where they're just going to get the ball to their backs and physically dominate with, you know, wide open carrying from the likes of Paul Asike, Pakistanasi Afu, and Fetu Vainikolo. It's going to be a dangerous game. So, there's going to be a lot of surprises this week. Well, I'm Aaron Castro for The Hook. Also, if you're an international fan, there will be something out for you to watch this game uh, before Friday. Like, subscribe, and comment.